friends, and welcome. I was thinking about fitting things together today. Sometimes we are problem solving and we have to figure things out and make things work. And when we're young, fitting things together is an achievement to be able to take the pieces of a puzzle out and then find the spot where this piece goes. I like these kinds of puzzles because they have little handles on them and you just find the spot where it fits. You look at the piece and analyze it and find the spot where it fits. And it's great fun to twist and turn and twist and turn and finally get it in the slot, fitting things together. Sometimes you can share a puzzle so that I would place one piece into the puzzle and then it was someone else's turn to share and find where the monkey on the bicycle goes. This is one kind of a puzzle and lots of fun to do. There are other kinds of puzzles too. These are called parquetry blocks and they're made in different shapes and it teaches all kinds of perceptions and shapes and sizes to young children. This set, which looks like this, is for young children and it comes with all different colors and shapes. It teaches you about each shape and names it. That's the half moon or half circle, the diamond shape, the triangle, oops, the triangle. So all of the different shapes are there. It also shows you that you can make a hole by using two halves. For instance, two square blocks makes one rectangle. Isn't that interesting? Or two half circles, one, two, makes a whole circle. And it be begins to build networks in the child's brain of how things go together. This is more advanced and it gives you the pieces that you'll use to make that square. And then there are opportunities for design. You can go along with the cards that they give you using a diamond and a parallelogram right there, or uh, here's the trapezoid. Maybe you have to make the trapezoid with a diamond and a triangle. So fitting things together is lots of fun. Then you don't have to use the cards at all and just dump out all the blocks on a surface and make patterns and designs. How do they fit together? I can put some of my blocks along that side and then try and fit my triangle in there and see, oh, I can fit this triangle in there and make all different shapes and designs with colors and different patterns. It's great to experiment with these kinds of blocks and children will have lots of fun trying different designs out for size and uh, creating their own uh, imagery, identifying colors and identifying shapes. I hope you'll try them sometime. Well, the story today has to do with sharing and solving a puzzle. Too Many Carrots written and illustrated 
by Katie Hudson. Oh dear, there's Bunny. Wow, look at all those carrots. Here's his friend Turtle down here. To do, eat carrots, plant carrots, collect carrots, eat more carrots. Hmm. Rabbit loved carrots. He collected them wherever he went. Oh, he's taking them from somebody's garden. This sign says no trespassing. Rabbit was proud of his collection and burrowed it away in his cozy hole. But Rabbit had a problem, a big problem. Here's his burrow. He couldn't sleep. Too many carrots in that burrow. His cozy hole was too crowded to live in. Hmm, what to do? I need a place to sleep, Rabbit told Tortoise. You could share my house, Tortoise said. It looks cozy and snug, Rabbit said. Maybe it's a little too snug for two, suggested Tortoise. Not at all, said Rabbit. And they squeezed in there. Oh dear. Uh oh, oh dear, ouch, ah! The rabbit squeezed into Tortoise's shell. They went crashing down the hill. That's not going to work. Oh dear, well, perhaps we can stay in Bird's Nest, said Rabbit. My nest is quite small, Rabbit, said Bird. I am sure we will all fit, replied Rabbit. And up they went to Bird's Nest. Rabbit hauled all his carrots up the tree. Whoa, groaned Tortoise and Bird as the branch wobbled and swayed. <gasps> oh, oh, and snapped, crash. I'm sorry, Bird. Now three of us don't have a place to sleep, said Rabbit. He can sleep in my house, said Squirrel. Oh, thank you, Squirrel. How kind of you, said Rabbit. Squirrel's got a nice house in that hollow tree. I don't think any more carrots will fit, Rabbit, said Squirrel. Oh, well, carrots were coming out of every hole. Tortoise fit in. Just a few more, Rabbit replied. Uh-oh, whimpered Tortoise, Bird, and Squirrel. Crack, crash. The tree burst open with all those carrots stuffed inside. Now four of us don't have anywhere to sleep, grumbled Squirrel. You can sleep at my house called Beaver. It has plenty of space. Ooh, he has a nice house. Great, I can bring even more carrots, Rabbit said with a smile. Oh, these guys aren't smiling very much. But with all your carrots, we can't fit inside, said Beaver, a bit bewildered. It was stuffed with carrots. Just then the rain started. Tortoise shivered, bird whimpered, squirrel squirrel. Here comes the rain and no shelter. And Beaver heard a terrible rumble as his house collapsed. Oh no, my house, yelled Beaver. Oh no, my carrots, cried Rabbit. His squirrel and tortoise wondering what to do next. Oh no, down the river they went kerplash. Rabbit felt just terrible. His friends were cold, tired, and homeless, and it was all his fault. Even worse, Rabbit still had all of his carrots and his house. And that's when he realized there was only one thing to do. What do you think Rabbit will do? Let's see. 
share everything with his friends. After all, carrots weren't for collecting, they were for sharing. They all sat down to a feast of carrots and made some room in Rabbit's house, and they all lived happily together. What a nice story about sharing. And sharing made everything better. They all slept so nicely in Rabbit's bed. Tortoise, squirrel, bird, and beaver. Thanks for listening, friends.